indexes are up and GME is down. Um, I, I don't want to be the first one to, you know, to, to, blow, uh, to blow the horn and announce the bad news, but I'm pretty sure that the GameStop short squeeze is over. Because the conditions that made the short squeeze possible, that made it so successful, uh, the fact that the um, that you know GameStop was so oversold and that you know the uh, there was 140 percent of the shares being shorted, um, which is you know, in and of itself kind of a, something that's hard to wrap your head around, um, that is intuitively um, unsustainable uh, to the average person uh, who was looking into this situation. And of course, the the very very low price of the stock, um, all those all those conditions are gone. Um, GameStop is now very expensive. Um, it is not heavily shorted like it was before, um, and uh, the interest uh, that you would have to pay, the rate of interest that you would have to pay if you want to borrow the stock to short it, uh, has declined significantly, down from 26% to 10%, according to Zero Hedge. And according to S3, um, it would seem as only 53% of the shares uh, are currently being shorted. So that's down from 140% to 53%. So a lot of shorts have covered. Or at least they had as of this morning. Um, I would say that as of right now, uh, <laughs> considering that GameStop is down over 30% uh, today, uh, that uh, a lot of people have gone back short again crushing many of the hodlers. Um, now, a lot of these people who were hodling GameStop um, bought all the way at the bottom back when it was still, you know, a double digit or even a single digit uh, stock, in which case they're up so many hundreds of uh, percent that uh, I guess they don't care, you know, if it drops 30% in one day, they're still going to hodl it. But since they didn't sell into the squeeze when, uh, you know, things were up high, you know, when back when it was up over 300, uh, you know, even today, uh, when there was a lot of momentum pushing GameStop upwards, when it didn't need all of that, you know, all these retail guys, the retail guys could have sold out um, and then kept their powder dry and waited for uh, all these guys to go back short again, only to pile back into the market and uh, push it back up and trigger all their stops and create another squeeze. You know, starting a short squeeze is all well and good, but if you ride the price all the way up and then ride it all the way back down again, um, you don't have any more capital to work with. And of course, you know, your your band of merry men who may have been Johnny Come Lately's and joined you, um, you know, along the way uh, and, you know, didn't buy all the way down at the bottom when, uh, when uh, GameStop was trading the double digits. Uh, you know, they might be in the red by now. And so they might, even if they sold right now, might have even less capital to work with um, on, you know, for round two. At the end of the day, I don't think that Wall Street bets uh, hodling all of their shares um, is going to be enough to keep GameStop high. Um, you know, what got it so high to begin with was not all, was not just all retail buying. It was the, it was the, the chain reaction that the initial, um, you know, retail pump created. And so if they let themselves get crushed as, you know, the short squeeze winds down, um, then, you know, like I said, they're not going to be able to pull this off twice. Or rather, you know, if they do, they're not going to be as effective next time or not as effective as they otherwise would have been. Oh, by the way, I have to add the disclaimer. None of this is investment advice. There, I said it. I'm not going to go to jail right now, right, SEC? What I'm pondering here is all academic. Um, it's not meant to be concrete advice to anybody. Again, as I said, hindsight is 2020, so I'm trying to look at what's just happened and think about, well, how could things have been done better? And before I wrap up uh, my discussion of GameStop for today, yes, I obviously... Um, there's been a very unfair suppression of the price uh, that has been perpetrated by Robinhood and other brokers by limiting how much people could buy, by you know banning people from buying the stock like GameStop, AMC, Nokia, and others uh, entirely. Yes, they've been, they worked very hard uh, to kill the squeeze, to blunt uh, the, the momentum. But you know once that momentum is stopped, uh, you know you need to you need to head for the exits or else you're gonna get hammered back down. 
because the pendulum swung, um, you know, it swung up pretty high. It swung all the way almost to $500 a share, but now it's it's swung, it's swinging back down. And hodling cannot make the price go up. The only thing that can make the price go up is if new buyers come in. Now, uh, with all that out of the way, uh, something I want to discuss is uh, a lot of the infighting that I'm seeing um, on Wall Street bets, which again is not a community that I'm a part of. Um, it is on Reddit, so I will never be a part of their community. Um, I find redditors generally to be, um, you know, unfriendly and, uh, and and hard to deal with. Um, they are a different kind of autist than I'm used to. You know, I, I get more of the 4chan and Twitter crowd. So the most I will ever do on these kinds of boards is lurk. And, you know, in the past week or so that I've been lurking, um, you know, particularly over this past weekend, uh, they seem to be turning on each other. And the, uh, the pro silver crowd that first started posting last week about, you know, hey, maybe we should, you know, rotate into silver. Uh, this could be the next you know, the next, next big uh, short squeeze that we could try and trigger, which, you know, to me, I, as someone who's somewhat familiar with the metals market, I thought, hey, you know, that's a pretty good idea. If you guys were able to make it work in the GameStop case, you know, why not try his silver? Many people have tried and failed before uh, to <clears throat> to uh, trigger short squeeze in silver, but there's never been anything organized like this um, to where you have a lot of people and a lot of, with a lot of resources in one place. And I think the logic of it is pretty simple, and it's similar to what you know what was going on with GameStop. You have, um, uh, you essentially have uh, the the metals markets, silver and gold, but in this case, they're talking about silver, um, polluted with naked shorts. You have a bunch of banks and financial institutions that sell silver futures contracts. Um, knowing that they have, you know, with no intention of ever acquiring silver to deliver um, to someone, um, you know, when that contract expires, because they know that people just use silver futures and gold futures mostly um, as, as a way of trading um, the metals, because it's a lot easier than moving around the physical metal. Um, it's an easy way to buy and sell gold and silver. And since they know that almost nobody ever, you know, accepts delivery, uh, you can essentially uh, sell a futures contract um, even if you don't have the metal. <laughs> and so the effect of this is that the volume of gold and silver, um, and again, in this case, silver trading on the market um, in terms of claims, there, you know, there's a lot more claims to ounces of silver being traded every day than there are actual ounces of silver in existence. And so, how would you how would you create a short squeeze in this space? Uh, well, you would just have to come up. Uh, you would have to f force uh, the people who are essentially shorting silver uh, to have to deliver. All of these people who are, um, you know, writing these silver futures contracts, make them deliver the silver. A take of physical silver, you know, which is you know, which the whole futures market is pyramided off of you know it's essentially the reserves like the reserves in a bank it's fractional reserve banking um just like i discussed before start drawing down the physical reserves um and i i wasn't quite sure how they would accomplish this i talked about this a couple days ago and you know because i thought it was a good idea but it's like well other people tried and nobody's ever been able to do it so how would you guys do it um and i think today i'm starting to to, to realize you know what what might be a good way because buying the silver etf um, I, I, you, have, you can have no faith in stuff like that. Um, I don't think that buying up, you know, this ETF is going to, um, uh, it's going to force delivery of physical silver because I'm sure the ETF would probably just lie. Because, you know, the theory was this is a, there was a uh, SLV, I guess, in their prospectus. They say that, hey, um, if people invest a certain amount of money, you know, with our, um, people invest more money into this fund, we will take that money and go buy physical silver to put in our vaults. And so owning shares in SLV is like owning physical silver. That was that was their thing. But there's there's there seems to be some weasel words in the in the you know in the, uh, the terms that could allow them to essentially take the money and not buy more silver with it. And so that fund might end up being a black hole. You could bid up that fund you know real high without necessarily impacting uh, the silver the overall silver market. But something I've been seeing today, uh, screenshots from JM Bullion and other sites, other dealers that sell physical silver, um, prices, uh, you know, getting pretty high up there, uh, upwards of over $40. Um, that's a significant premium over uh, the paper of silver, 
which is trading, I think, in the high 20s, like $29 an ounce. And so when you have this big um, uh, paper to physical premium or you know, premium for physical silver over paper silver, uh, what that does is it creates an arbitrage opportunity. Because supposedly all these silver futures contracts are claims to physical silver. It's just that nobody ever, um, nobody ever exercises that claim um, and takes delivery of physical silver. But if you're one of these dealers, or you're somebody who wants to, you know, a wholesaler who wants to sell to these dealers, uh, and you see, well, physical silver is going for forty-three dollars an ounce, um, I can uh, go out there and buy a futures contract. Uh, for $29 an ounce, accept delivery, and then sell that silver for $43 an ounce. That's a, uh, you know, that's a, like a 20, or no, that's like a 30% profit. Over 30%. I, I can't do the exact math in my head. And so, it, you know, if you can tr create a true, um, if you can truly inflate the overall um, uh, physical silver premium, then that will draw um, physical silver out of the COMEX reserves and it will start, um, it will encourage people to accept delivery of physical silver um, who, you know, who own futures contracts. But again, at this point, the question is, is there an overall shortage of silver or is there just a, you know, that is pushing up the price of these coins or is there a shortage of these particular coins? Um, is it that they can't mint enough coins because they just, you know, they just got this sudden surge in demand and these dealers don't have enough inventory to supply all of it, so they're jacking up the prices to save their inventory? Um, you know, is it just that they're, that they're physically at this point, is it like a short-term thing or is this creating an overall shortage of, of silver in general? The case made by some and something that I think is plausible is that right now all we're seeing is a, is a shortage of these coins in particular um, and of the bullion. Um, and such, particularly the, you know, the small denominations, the one ounce uh, units. And then on the wholesale market for, you know, for silver, for raw silver, um, you know, there would be much less of a physical premium. And that's because it would take time, it would take a lot of, uh, of, dem of demand side pressure uh, to, uh, to really stretch the supply. Um, to really, you know, eat away at, at the physical supply. They would have to sustain higher demand for physical silver um, even after uh, the mints are able to start, you know, cranking up production and stamping out more coins and, uh, uh, you know, and are really um, uh, sucking as much from the miners and from the other wholesalers as possible. And so this is a long game. This isn't something that happens over the course of a couple of weeks, like GameStop. This is something that would happen over months or years uh, for for silver, because you know it is a physical market. But again, if there's that much bad blood on the Wall Street Bet sub or subreddit, and they think that anyone who's saying to buy silver over GameStop is a shill who's working for Citadel um, and is some kind of disinformation uh, spy. I do not think that there will be enough unity uh, for these people to uh, sustain that kind of a long-term attack. Again, even if you had total unity uh, amongst all of the Wall Street Bets guys, uh, and they all were hodling their shares of GameStop, they themselves, I don't think, are enough uh, to, pr to have prevented GameStop from falling today and to continue to fall tomorrow, potentially, uh, because, um, you know, the... Uh, the shorts just had a lot more oxygen to breathe. Um, it, it, today, GameStop was a much more shortable stock than it was last week. Um, there was only, you know, there were a lot more shares that were not being shorted uh, that were available to be borrowed by these large institutions. The interest rate uh, that they had to pay, uh, the borrowing fee, I should say, um, which is essentially an interest rate that they have to pay on those borrowed shares that they are shorting went down substantially. And so, you know, it, it was inevitable that they were going to go back short. And unless you own uh, your uh, your shares of GameStop in a cash account, which, you know, if you're using Robinhood, I don't, you know, they put you in margin by default, uh, something we learned last week, you know, your, short, your very shares uh, maybe loaned out to shorts. Uh, they might be shorting your very stocks that you own or that you think you own. So the GameStop trade, you know, was gonna was gonna turn bad. Um, and I don't see, you know, I don't see any unity 
on that board for them to move in any particular direction. Like there was no plan for a round two. It was just buy and hold. You know, hold until a thousand, which just wasn't going to happen. There wasn't enough momentum for that. Maybe there would have been that kind of momentum had they not been stifled and shut down by Robin Hood and these other brokerages. Um, you know, had the shorts not had you know had enough time to uh, to to cover when the price was low. Maybe the you know the percentage of of uh, you know of shares that were being shorted would have been still been higher come today. You know, it had the shorts not had that opportunity to cover that was granted to them by Robin Hood. But the fact is, all that happened. So that's that's about all I have to say for today. Um, if you gained anything of value out of this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and sharing this video. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe because I do upload every day and I'd hate to have you miss one. So I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.